Hi there, this is Saurabh Galagli. I'd like to take you through the steps that are involved in doing an endoscopic decompression for a herniated disc in the lumbar spine. So the anatomic area that we're able to access with an endoscopic technique is located here in the lumbar spine, just beneath the nerve root that's exiting at the level where the disc is herniated, and in an area called Cambin's Triangle, where the nerve root that's exiting is above us, and the nerve root that's usually being pinched by the disc herniation is just medial to where we're going. If we zoom in on this area, we can see that there's a little passageway here where we can insert a scope through a tiny little cannula that's about 5.5 millimeters in diameter, which is roughly about the size of a pencil. So here's my setup in the operating room. I have an x-ray machine that allows me to make sure that I'm operating on the correct level, and I can see the images of that x-ray machine in real time in addition to the pictures of the camera at the end of my scope. I start by introducing a needle from the skin off to the side, into the disc space. Here we're operating on the 4-5 level and here's a picture of my spinal needle just about to enter the disc. The next thing I do is that once I'm inside the disc I inject a tiny little bit of dye in order to outline the disc and demonstrate if there's an annular tear and I also mix that dye with a little bit of methylene blue so that I can stain the disc fragments that are degenerative inside the disc and make them easier to remove. Next we put a, spi we put a nitinol needle down the center of that spinal needle and over the top of that what we put in is we put in a cannula and that cannula allows us to introduce a special camera that has a working channel in the center that allows me to remove fragments of the herniated disc. This is the view that I'm able to see through the camera where if I bring in an anatomic picture you can see the relevant point that we're looking at which is right at the disc space with the vertebral body above and below the thecal sac right above us and here I've completed a discectomy at that level. Now the really exciting thing about this technique is that I'm able to do this through a very small quarter or half inch incision off to the side with very little discomfort afterwards. In fact, the patient doesn't even require a full general anesthetic. They're under conscious sedation during the length of the procedure, and so far I've been really happy with the results.